Grace Community Chapel. Good morning. It's nice to see you here in person again for the first time in a long time. Say good morning to those who are at home. Good morning. Joining us virtually. We're all saying good morning. And we're just going to just move in a little slowly to make sure that the sound is working and, and folks on, on the other end are able to hear us. And uh, with that, let's open it. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for the opportunity to gather in your home, to open your word and to study. We thank you for faith. We thank you for Christ. And Lord, I just ask a blessing this morning on the word and on pastor, that you would do a work in us through your word, that we would be changed, that we would be more like you. Lord, I ask that you would help us to understand. I ask that you would help those who have never rightly understood these things, that they've been confusing or odd, that today there would be a clarity. Lord, we thank you for the sacrifices that have been made in our country. We think of Memorial Day. We think of those who have made sacrifices that we might have the freedoms that we so enjoy. And Lord, in light of everything, those gifts really are. And Lord, we realize, though, that those sacrifices, the greatest sacrifices many people could ever make, don't compare to the sacrifice you made when you gave us Christ. And so, Lord, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for your mercy. We ask your hand of protection over us. We ask a blessing on scripture reading is 1st Peter chapter 1 starting in verse 13 through 17 and there are no announcements this morning not forgetting I'm reading from the New American Standard 1st Peter chapter 1 verse 13 therefore prepare your minds for action and keep sober in spirit Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the former lusts which were yours in your ignorance, but like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves in all your behavior. Because it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. If you address the Father the one who impartially judges according to one's work, conduct yourselves in fear during the time of your stay on earth. We ask that God would bless the reading of his word. I'd like to introduce to you Anna this morning, who's going to lead us in music worship and praise to our king. Thank you, Anna. Well, good morning. Good morning. It's nice seeing friendly faces this morning and being at home in our church. And we missed you guys that are um, on the web, but we look forward to seeing you all when you can join us again. Um, this morning, um, we're going to do some songs that are more familiar to us, and we're actually going to use our hymnals, which are probably getting a little dusty. So, um, the first one is a contemporary song by All Sons and Daughters called Oh How I Need You. And then if you want to start thumbing through your hymnal, the next song will be Amazing Grace, if you don't know it by hymnal. <clears throat> 
Oh yes, please stand and join you, please. <laughs> Number was the first one? Well, the first one is a contemporary song, so it's oh. not in your hymnal. I'm so okay. sorry. sorry. But Amazing Grace will be the second song. <laughs> okay. Lord, I find you in the seeking. Lord, I find you in the doubt. And to know you is to love you. And to know so little else I need you. Oh, how I need you. Oh, how I need you. Oh, how I need you. Lord, I find you.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be back. Yes, Amen. 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 Would you open your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 1? I just feel it necessary to say there will be absolutely no sleeping this morning. Smart <laughs> <laughs> energy drink. Good. Good. All right, let's pray again. Father, we thank you for our our country. We thank you for uh, the founding of this great nation. Thank you for what we were founded on. We are mindful this weekend of uh, the cost of our freedoms and our liberties. And Father, we're grateful. We are a grateful people. And even in that, Father, we lift up those that continue to provide that for us. Um, the armed forces. Um, there's many. And we could pause. We could thank you for uh, law enforcement emergency people, health care providers. We've had a lot brought to our mind, Lord, to, te to teach us that we need to be grateful for all of our freedoms, all the things that we have. So we're grateful. And as we bow with a grateful heart before you, we thank you for so great a salvation. Thank you for a Savior that so loved the world that he gave, and a Father that so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believes in him but should not perish but have everlasting life. We are grateful and we bow in your presence with grateful hearts. Father, we pray, knowing that you bless your word, that the Spirit of God is our teacher. We bow in light of that and we ask you to speak to our hearts. Uh, give us liberty and freedom because of the word of God this day. May your will be done as we bow in your presence. And we pray in our Savior's name. All right, look, this is doing this this day. I don't know what's going on. And in the absence of all the people, the top of this pulpit's blocked. In the presence of all these walk people, this... All right, I have my springtime voice. Have you noticed that? It's raspy. I must be allergic to something. So, stop clearing your throats. <laughs> it's my job. All right. So, uh, we'll be mindful of that, that my voice is going to be a little interesting. But God is good, isn't he? Amen. And he's always faithful. So, uh, I invite you to look in First Peter. We're going to look through a few verses today. Uh, we've been in this book for a little while. Uh, in cold and wind and sleet and hail and snow and black flies, sunshine, and now the house of God. Yeah, it's an yeah, amazing yeah. thing, isn't it? What a journey we've been on. So, uh, we, for a couple of weeks, we talked about so great a salvation. And we, we took a verse out of Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 2, 3, and the writer says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? And the obvious answer is, there is no escape. If we neglect a salvation that the Almighty has provided for us, there's no other answer. I mean, that is the answer. So, so we have come to this book, and for 12 verses, we've kind of talked a little bit about that salvation. That so great a salvation. And... In verse 1, this is a recap, so we kind of get all up to speed again. In verse 1, we talked about the fact that God Almighty chose us to salvation. Every time I come back and look at it, you know, you try to wrap your head around that. God, if you are saved today, God Almighty has chosen you unto salvation. I think that's a big deal. And you come down through, and it talks about being from the foreknowledge of God the Father... Uh, set apart, sanctified by the work of the Spirit. 
that you may obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with his blood. This is all part of that salvation. May grace and peace be yours to the fullest measure because of that salvation. Then Peter breaks into a doxology. He's moved. He's um, just in awe of this great salvation and this great God. And he says in verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy, not according to uh, my blue eyes and once blonde hair, or my dynamic personality, or all of these things that I have going for myself, but according to his great mercy. See, what's so great about the salvation is, is it glorifies the great God. And because of that great God, and according to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again. So you see, the initiator of the whole thing is God. I didn't wake up one day in my wisdom, my infinite wisdom, which you guys are all aware of, right? I didn't wake up one day in my infinite wisdom and say, today's the day I'll get born again. Because I just happen to be that bright. See, God is the mover in that whole thing. <laughs> it's okay? We're back. Is Mike talking? It wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> really? It wasn't Mike? I find that hard to believe. It really wasn't you, Mike? <laughs> uh, hey, it's fun to be back here. You know? <laughs> there is a dynamic about being together, isn't there? Yes. There's no question about that. And uh, it, those who are at home, by the way, <clears throat> here's the deal. Now, you know how it works in the church. Uh, we have a rule. If I can't sleep, you can't sleep. I think that's fair. Here's another rule. If I have to wear jeans, get out of your pajamas in your homes, all right? <laughs> I mean, think about it. They're sitting there drinking coffee, probably eating popcorn, in their PJs. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. Just a little jealousy. That's right. That might have been motivated by jealousy. Uh, I'll just make this pledge for you. You will not see me here in my PJs, all right? All right. <laughs> so, anyhow, before I so rudely interrupt you. <laughs> you, you see how it works? We're, we're glad to be back together. Um, because of his great mercy, I'm in verse 3, because of his great mercy has caused us to be born again. Bless me. To a living hope. You know what? I would just want to tell you that. That's music to my ears. Okay, That's life, and that's what we're about here. So when kids play, it's okay. Don't ever, ever feel awkward when we hear the kids talk and sing and play. It's better than beeping horns. <laughs> <laughs> Any day of the week. <laughs> so, born again to a living hope. We have a living hope. It's living because the Savior is living. So our hope is living. It's lively. It's energized. You know what's going to happen. We're not going to get very far today, right? Because I'm having such a good time in the review. <laughs> a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To obtain an inheritance. And that we talked about that as well. This is all part of our great salvation. Uh, it's reserved in heaven for you. You, who are protected or kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this so great a salvation, you greatly rejoice. Well, it's pause. Do you? Because you should. If you had this salvation, joy should be a part of your life. You rejoice. Even though for a little while, if necessary, you've been distressed by various trials. The Word of God is very honest. It tells us that trials are distressful. They're not always pleasant. But if necessary, he tells me that the sovereign God knows what I need. He's in the process of parenting me because he's a good father. He does not want me to be a spoiled brat. So he'll bring things into my life to discipline me, instruct me, and change me. So various trials, the proof of your faith being much more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tried by fire may be found to the praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. 
And though you have not seen him, this is Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, and though you do not see him now, can I add, beloved, but one day. One day. Is that a hope? Is that something to look forward to? One day we're going to be holy. And though you have not seen him, and though you do not see him now, but believe in him and greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. Because of what? Because of that great salvation. Obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And we went on and we talked about the prophets prophesying about it. Uh, the Spirit of God energizing them about it. Uh, the apostles preaching the gospel. The Holy Spirit again energizing all of that. And the angels themselves stooping and looking in to this great salvation. Watching the church and kind of scratching their holy heads. Wow. What is this all about? So they study us to learn about this great salvation. So we say all of that to say in verse 13, therefore. It's a context word. The old preachers always said when I come across the word, therefore I always ask, what is it? Therefore. therefore. It joins all of the previous part of that to what is going on now. So in light of this great salvation that we've just gone back through and reviewed very, very quickly... Therefore, gird your minds for action. Uh, some translations, gird the loins of your mind, maybe. Yes. Is that what it says? Which gives us a better picture. Because it's kind of an Old Testament phrase. When God was going to deliver Israel from Egypt, and he was doing the Passover, he told them to eat their meal in a particular way having their loins girt, their shoes on their feet, and their staffs in their hand. Why? Because he wanted them ready to move at a moment's notice. Girt your loins. I want you to, if, if you, I'll invite you to this, if you just hold your passage and go back to Hebrews in verse, uh, chapter 12, Hebrews 12, So if I'm in the biblical days and I'm wearing the long flowing robes and I'm going about doing things, I had a belt. And when I was going to do something that required me moving and uh, if, I was, if I was running or I was working or something, I would take up the long flowing robe and I would tuck it into my belt. So it wouldn't hinder my progress or whatever I was doing. So when you come to Hebrews 12, 1, you get sort of a picture of that. Hebrews 11 tells us about all these heroes of our faith. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, again, in light of all of, of chapter 11, since we, are, uh, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Now, I've preached on that verse a lot of times, and I want to do it right now, but I can't, because there's just a lot going on there. But what is the word picture again? It says, uh, let us also lay aside every encumbrance. What am I going to do? I'm going to run a race. So I'm, if I'm back in this day, I'm going to tie up the robe, or I'm going to get rid of the robe or something, so it doesn't trip me up. So what we have back in, in Peter, when we go to that and we look at that, when we're told to girt your loins for action... It means, is there an encumbrance? Is there something that would hinder progress? And I need to think that through. But we're not talking physically here. We're talking about the mind. He says, gird up the loins of your mind. So once again, you've got that word picture in Hebrews. You've got that idea out of uh, the Passover feast. So now I'm applying that to my mind. I need to have my mind gird for action. So, let's do some application. What might it be that would hinder my mind? What would be an encumbrance to my mind that would keep me from, he says, therefore gird up your minds for action in light of so great a salvation? 
Can I remind you, beloved, listen carefully. The battle is for your mind. We have an enemy. He lies to you all the time. The power of the lie is if you believe it. His lies fall on the wayside if you don't believe them. If you believe his lie, therefore he has power. When a person is, is a child and they're growing up and the parent continually tells the child, you are stupid. You are really stupid. How can you be so stupid? Now nobody ever experienced that, I'm sure, but some parents do some pretty dumb things. You are worthless. You'll never amount to anything. Are you aware that some children grow up under that? That is a lie. But it forms a belief system. And the church and the word of God and God Almighty will work trying to remove that out of that mind because they've been conditioned, learn behavior. They've been conditioned to believe that they're stupid. I've been told if a lady walks into a room and she's got a dress on and nine ladies tell her how beautiful she is and one, one lady says something negative about it, she listens to the negative comment. Is that true? I've never been a lady. <laughs> Yes. I am no lady, by the way. <laughs> is that true? Yes. Ladies, is it true? Yes. But why? See, we have, a, we have an enemy. That's why we're told to do this. That's why it's so very important. Gird up the loins of your mind for action. What is the action? Living out this great salvation. It's a freeing salvation. You know, kind of follow through what Jesus says about freedom sometimes. It's pretty important. So the enemy comes along and lies. So what is, what is a hindrance? A hindrance is just something like that. Something out of, out of our past. Something that we learned while we were a child. You know, some, something from learned behavior. Let me give you some more. We may not get very far today. We may, may camp out here for a little while. That's okay, right? I mean, do anybody have several verses they want to do? Or are you okay if we do one? You know? But this is important because it's what we're talking about here. I'm now, Peter is encouraging me, actually commanding me to live out this salvation in a very practical way. And because I have this great salvation, I should have what it has. Therefore, gird, gird your minds for action. So I'll give you some. Obviously, believing a lie would be very dangerous, wouldn't it? So I must believe truth. By the way, the belt in the whole armor of God is called the belt of truth. Pretty significant, right? It's the truth that will set me free from the encumbrances. And by the way, I, I just have to say this as a preacher and as your pastor. you got to read it. That's how you get the truth. I've tried before. I've actually fallen asleep with my head on it. I didn't get much out of it that way. It doesn't go into your head if you put your head on the pages. You must read it. You might get ink on your forehead, but especially if you're writing your Bible. But you've got to read it. The truth will set you free. The lies will hold us in bondage. So, in, in the culture that we're in right now, in, in what is going on right now, fear is very common. And, and I don't want to get into the politics of it. I do, but I won't. <laughs> you know? Um, but fear. There's a lot of people right now living in fear. And, and I have respect for all that's going on. I do. I respect people's opinions. I really do. It, it, to me, it's not an us or them. Like, there's us and then there's them out there that are not here. Don't do that. You know? We respect other people's opinions and how they feel that they must do this right now. And I'm okay with that. I honestly am. So that's not what this is about. But what this is about is gird up the loins of your minds for action. So one hindrance, which would be like that long flowing robe, would be fear and worry. And worry absolutely cripples people. And it does. What, what are you anxious about? What are you fearful of? What are you worrying about? Sit down with a piece of paper and, and write some notes to yourself. 
do it as a do it as a as, as a project. Sit down with a piece of paper and write this stuff down. I'm fearful of this. I'm fearful of that. And some of it, I'm just going to tell you, folks. Some of it's ridiculous. It is. I know you're encouraged by that, right? Uh, and I meant it in the most loving possible way. <laughs> Note to the control freaks. You're in control of absolutely nothing. There's only one in control. Yeah, I, I love it. Every time you do this. <laughs> yes, you keep staring at her. I'm not looking no more. Newsflash, you're in control of absolutely nothing. There's only one in control. So get over that real quick. Trust him and get rid of the fear and the worry and the anxiety. The other thing is, make a list of that stuff and see how much of that stuff really is silly, honestly. We worry about stuff. Probably isn't even going to happen. Okay. Worry. Fear. These are the things that are, that are hindering us. But they're mental. See, they're not, they're not actually the road. But they're mental. They're, they're like the things that are tripping us up mentally. They become strongholds, and the enemy uses those. We passively give in, because we develop that mindset and that attitude, and we give ground to the enemy, he aggressively takes it, he sets up a stronghold in your mind, and you're in trouble. And all of a sudden you're sitting there going, how did I get here? I'll tell you how you got there. Back up and find out where you gave in on that stronghold, and deal with it right there. So, we have to move on a little bit. But I encourage you to really kind of think that whole thing through. If all of this is true, if this so great a salvation is so great of a salvation, if all that this contains is actually true, which it is, and therefore I have this, then for me to be not girding up my mind for action, for me to be tripping over worry and anxiety and fear and bitterness and anger and all of these different things that control my mind means that I haven't got a grip on what's going on here yet. And Peter's telling us, you know, make up your mind. How's that sound? Let's call that the first point. Make up your mind. How about today, when Libby, you make up your mind? Is God God or isn't he God? You read all about him in the book. Is it, is it practical or is it just so much theology? So that's the first one. Therefore, gird, up, gird your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. I like that. I like that. I'm highly opinionated on this one, by the way, boys and girls, uh, because I was an alcoholic and I was a drug addict. And I'm very opinionated on it. And I am a teetotaler by the grace of God. He set me free. So I have very strong feelings about that. And sometimes my feelings will kind of get in the way of your feelings. So what we'll do in that one is we'll extend grace to one another. But I have a strong, strong attitude towards this. And having been a drunk and a nasty one at that, I was not the type of person you wanted to go partying with. Just the way it was. I don't call it Bud Wiser, I call it Bud Stupider, because I never saw anybody get any smarter when they get a telephone. But anyhow, I need to move on. So you, you say, okay, um, it says, keep sober in spirit. Now again, I'm thinking about my mind. This is what we're talking about. And I ran with alcohol, just because it illustrates. Paul says, be not drunk on wine, but be filled with the Spirit. So he's talking about an influence, isn't he? Don't be under the influence of wine, in his parallel, be under the influence of the Spirit. So the thought here is, don't be intoxicated. Don't be under the influence. That's literally what he's saying. He's not reducing it just to alcohol, or drugs, or things like that. Let's go back to what we're talking about. Don't be under the influence of worry 
fear and anger. All those things that control us. Therefore, gird your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. See, he's really giving us commands. He's telling us, this is the way it has to be. Now, I really want to go back to the sober thing again and make sure you don't misunderstand, in my strong opinion, this is not about alcohol. It could be, but that's not exclusively what it's about. It's far greater than that. So, get rid of, get rid of the things that are going to entangle us mentally, living out this salvation. Don't get under the influence of these things that are going to entangle us living out our salvation. We could give you those in three things. Sin, self, and Satan. Three things that will hinder us. That we need to be sober about. Third thing is to fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now fix. It's a mindset. So we're in there again, we're back into the mind. Fix your mind, your hope, completely. That word is very important. Perfectly. Fix your hope completely, not half-heartedly, on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So I'm to fix my hope, a, a mindset, a set mind on hope. Now, let's follow through what we're talking about. If I've done that, that would be just logical that my mind wouldn't be fixed. Fear, anger, bitterness, because I've fixed my mind on something else. I have a mindset. My mindset is hope. Where is your hope? The control freak's hope is in his control freak. The person who's not being a control freak, their hope is in the sovereign God. Who has everything under control? So I want you to look at it this way. Because uh, we've talked about that word about grace before, previously. May grace and peace be yours to the fullest measure, talking about this great salvation. He says, fix your hope completely on the grace. It's just loaded with information here. On the grace, notice this, to be brought to you. We live in grace. We're saved by grace. We're sustained by grace. We're enabled by grace. I mean, we're just, we're graced all the time. Are you aware that this is called Grace Community Chapel because we thought that word through? It wasn't just a random thing. We are a graced community. We live in grace. We should be a gracing community because we live in grace. Grace. Now look, it's to be brought to you. We're saved by grace. So here's God's divine menu, and I want you to see it. This is the menu this, this day for you. Are you ready for this? I would come and, and, and wait upon you, but I have to social distance. So uh, I can't wait upon you, but you can look at the menu. I have a menu here, and this is God's divine menu of grace. The first item on the menu is condemnation. I don't like that, that item. I probably would pass on that. By the way, that's taken off the table. He's put a line through that. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Is that grace? I would say so. So here's the first item up for you. It's called justification. The fact that by God's grace, through the blood of Jesus Christ, you can be declared absolutely right, uh, absolutely justified in the sight of a holy God. You can be declared righteous in the eyes of a holy God. That's justification. That's in our so great salvation. That's on the menu. I took that item. I had course one. 
course two, by grace. You want to guess what it is? Thank you. Who said it? <clears throat> yes. The second course of God's divine menu is sanctification. As you are saved by grace, you are justified by grace. You are sanctified positionally and practically. You are holy because of God's grace. You are being made holy by God's grace. That's the second item on, on the menu. Pretty good, isn't it? Do you have that one? Well, you do. If you're born again unto a, a lively hope, you have justification. You've had the first course. You're partaking of the second course. Sanctification. Isn't he a great God? Yeah, he is. Here's, here's the third course of the meal on the divine menu. Glorification. Yeah, Rick, I knew. Glorification. This is a great grace which is to be brought to you. One day, beloved, we're going to be glorified. One day, no more stuff about this sin, which does so easily beset us. One day, we're going to be absolutely set free. We are free from the penalty of sin because of God's grace. We're being set free from the power of sin. That's sanctification. One day we're going to be free from the presence of sin. I think that deserves a hallelujah. Amen. One day. And it's all because of grace. It's all because of this so great a salvation. So, I think we're going to wrap it up right there for this week. Therefore, gird your, mind, gird your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely, not half-heartedly, on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Newsflash, he's coming again. I would dare say, judging by the way the world is going, it might not be far away. That might not be a bad thing. We're done this morning. Thank you. Thank you.